The native photos app on iOS 18 got a major redesign and people are having some mixed feelings about it. But the photos app can be incredibly powerful if you know how to use it properly. In this video, I'll show you how to use it like a pro, the best customization and organization features and the best of all, how to overcome the storage problem because of those thousands of photos and videos. You will definitely find it very useful. So. Let's jump right in. Like always, let me start with the basics and then gradually show you more advanced features of the app and we will end this video with the storage optimization techniques. Let's jump into the app. This is the new layout of the Photos app starting in iOS 18. If you are on any older version, you will soon see this UI after updating which I highly recommend. It may look confusing at first but I'll help make it simpler for you. Trust me. Basically, there are two major sections. First, the main gallery on the top and when you scroll down, I'll categorize the rest of all these as the organizer section. I'll come to the organizer section in a bit, but let's talk about the main gallery first. Obviously, this is where you see all your photos taken since day one. As you can see, I have a ton of them, like literally. It's sorted chronologically, so recent photos will be at the bottom. Here's a quick tip. If you are in the middle of your photo gallery somewhere and you want to quickly go back to the bottom, just tap on this all button and you will immediately jump to the end of the library. Similarly, if you want to go to the top of your library, just tap on the top portion of your library and it will take you right at the top. In my opinion, the newer Photos app UI is much cleaner. At the bottom, you will see a small floating tab with three options, years, months and all. The default is all, but you can switch to year view or month view. This can help you get to a photo based on date. For example, I want to look at our wedding photos from 2019. I can quickly jump to 2019 and then to May in a second. The default photo view is also three photos per row, but I can change it to show more or less photos. To do this, I can simply pinch in to show more and more photos in one view to see enlarged photos, I can zoom in through a pinch out gesture. I actually like to see larger photos, but my only gripe is if I close the photos app and come back, it goes back to a three photo view. On the left side are the sort and filter options. You can sort by date or recently added. If you click on filter, you can just view your favorites or photos or just videos. And in view options, you get the same zoom in zoom out options to view the photos big or small okay in the middle do you see these library options personal library and shared library what are these this is a wonderful new feature in ios 18 which i just love have you been in a situation where you take some pictures and you share the photos in your library to your husband or kids or parents through airdrop or messages now there is an easier way Apple has introduced something called the shared library for household members. In settings, just set up your shared library with everyone you want it to be in the shared library like your parents, husband or kids. Think of it like a library but that's shared with the ones you choose. Now, if you have some photos in your library, just copy them to a shared library by selecting those photos and moving them to the shared library. Now, everyone who has joined the shared library will see the photos instantly too. No need of airdropping, copying photos and all that fuss. This icon tells that this photo is part of the shared library. And in the filter option, you can choose if you want to see your own personal library or your shared library or both. Try it out, it's pretty nice. Okay, before we move into the organizing features, I want to show you the new updated search feature which Apple has updated in the iOS 18. Google has had this for a very long time, but in iOS 18, it's just incredible. Let me show you an action. At the top of the gallery, there is the search icon. As the name suggests, it's to search for photos or a bunch of photos in your gallery. In iOS 18, searching has become very natural. Obviously, you can search photos by date like 2019 Jan, December 2023, etc. But the search is now stackable to narrow down even more. For example, first I search for 2022. Now I add March to the search. Now again, add a place, the United States or Washington as one more filter. Now I add a person as well to the filter. You can see the search starts narrowing down as I add more filters. 
Stackable filters makes it really easy to narrow down the photos I'm looking for. This is cool, but this is based on metadata like date, time, place, etc. Apple now incorporates AI to identify what's in the picture. So you can ask something in the picture, for example, Anjana with wings. Apple has identified the photos with me and wings in the photo. This makes it so easy to search. One more beach photo of Anjana. Look at this. Photos app has filtered all the images of me in the beach. The best part is it works in videos too. It can identify specific things just in a part of a video. Here I search for videos of Anjana with a helmet. Photos has identified not just the video but also the portion of the video where I was in the frame with a helmet on. Likewise, you can just search for claps or bird chirping. It will just show you the video and the part where there is the clap sound or the birds chirping. Okay, that's the photo library itself. Now let's get into the interesting part, the organizer. If you scroll down below the gallery, you can see so many sections one after the other like albums, pinned collections, trips, featured photos, memories, media types and suggestions and so much more. I mean, all these categorizations are nice, but it all feels too cluttered now, right? This is what many people did not like when they got this update. In fact, for me, albums, favorites, people and media types are the sections useful to me and the others are not necessary at all. Don't worry, Apple has given customization options as well with the update. If you scroll to the bottom of the Photos app, you will see this thing called Customize and Reorder. If I go in here, I can reorder the section that I find most useful for me, like albums and people at the top. Not just that, I can even remove the sections which are not useful for me. I can go crazy to just remove everything from this organizer and that will leave me with just the gallery in a very clean and minimalistic look. But I would like some of them, like albums, people, media types and utilities. There. Now my Photos app looks so much cleaner and less cluttered with just the ones I really need. Even within the albums, I can change the view to grid or list to further customize it. Now with this decluttered UI, don't you think that this looks better than the older tabbed UI? One more thing I want to mention, albums can be super powerful in terms of managing and maintaining your photos. After every trip or an event, I immediately put all the photos in an album. Pro tip, in your gallery, just select all the photos from the event or trip like this, hold it for a second, then move them and drop them to add to album. With one gesture, you can create an album of all your grouped photos. There's a lot to dive into albums and specific organizational features. So if you want to know more, drop a comment and I'll make a deep dive video on it. Finally, let's talk about some storage saving features. This is almost everyone's problem, right? Especially with Apple charging $100 for 128 gigs, you need to save every bit of space. I mean, look at my photo library and the space it's taking. So, what are the best practices to keep your photo library from exploding? First and foremost, use the Photos app utilities to remove any duplicates from your library. This is a must do even if you have enough space. Go to the Photos app, go to the Utilities section and then tap on Duplicates. This will show you all the photos which has duplicates or similar photos which is taking all your valuable space. You can simply tap on merge and photos will merge the two copies into one. Or if you're confident, just select all the photos like this and tap on merge. Photos will pick the higher quality one and merge them all to have only one copy. Depending on how many duplicates you have, this is gonna save a bunch of space already. Second, do a cleanup of videos once in a while. This is a 30 second video which did not turn out so good but still took over 250 MB. Instead, you could have had 50 high resolution photos easily. So step one is to delete those space hogging videos. Go to Photos app, scroll to media types and choose videos. Here, select any bad take videos and delete them. If you have videos which are usually long, then try to trim them to just the necessary length which also will save a lot of space. Then go back to utilities and clean up the recently deleted section. This is like the recycle bin. 
Trust me, I take so many videos of my daughter and many are just bad takes waiting for her to do something. Cleaning up large videos has saved so much storage for me. And talking about videos, if your only device you view your photos are on iPhone, consider reducing the video resolution and frame rate. Go to settings, video and record video. Here, check if the resolution and frame rates are absolutely essential for you. Apple has given a storage guide for each format to help you decide on that. And finally, just use iCloud Photos. iCloud is Apple's cloud solution where it automatically uploads your photos to cloud. Your photos are safe and secure. That is the primary advantage. But the other advantage is, even if your phone storage is low, Apple will keep just the recent photo locally on your device while moving all the actual photos to iCloud. If you go back and view a photo which is not locally on your phone, Apple will download them when you need it. So you don't have to worry about your local storage filling up. As long as you have your cloud storage, you should be good to go. You do need to pay for the cloud storage, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it. Say you just need the iPhone 16 Pro 128 gigs and you have a photo gallery worth 200 gigs. You need to go for a 512 GB with some space for your apps too, which Apple will charge you an exorbitantly high $300. Instead, get the base model iPhone and get the 200 gigs of iCloud plan, which will cost you $3 per month. With $300 saved, you can keep the iCloud plan for eight and a half years. Plus, I'm sure iCloud storage cost will come down soon and you get the benefit of a safe storage, easy upgrade and a lot more. Trust me, I'm not trying to sell you any Apple plan. I have no collaboration with Apple. I genuinely use iCloud photos over buying a larger storage iPhone. Okay, that's everything for this video. I hope it was useful. If it was, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, this is Sanjana. Bye-bye.